So next let us see how we can create a mathematical model of a rotational mechanical control system and thus obtain the transfer function of such kind of a system. My name is Rishi Ramju and welcome to the Backbench Engineering community where I make engineering easy for you. So let us see this particular example. Find the transfer function of the following rotational control system. So here what we observe is that we have two objects. So what we have to keep in our mind is that in the case of a rotational control system, we do not consider mass. Rather, instead of mass, we consider the moment of inertia. So here we have two objects with moment of inertia, I1 and I2. So here what we observe is that an external rotating torque is applied over here and therefore when a rotating torque is applied here an angular displacement of theta 1 is observed over here. And now this also contains a spring of spring constant k and here we have another object of moment of inertia i2 and here another angular displacement of theta is observed. And now here we have a dash pot or a damper of damping constant B. So this is basically the system that we have right now. So first let us consider this particular moment of inertia. That is let us consider I1. So in the case of I1 what we observe is that we have provided an external torque to. So here we have an external torque to which is equal to the sum of the opposing forces or the sum of the retarding forces that are developed here. So now when we apply an external torque to here, the restoring torques that are developed is one because of this particular moment of inertia I1 and the second restoring torque that is developed is because of this particular spring K. So this is equal to to because of I1 plus to because of K. So here to because of I1 is given as I1 into alpha which is the angular acceleration. So angular acceleration is simply the second order derivative of this particular angular displacement. So this becomes I1 into d squared theta 1 by dt squared plus now the restoring torque developed in this particular spring is given as k into the difference between the angular displacements. So this is given as k into theta 1 minus theta. So let us take this as equation number 1. So now next let us take the case of I2. So let us take I2. So in the case of I2 what we observe is that there is no external torque applied on it. Like here we are applying an external torque. Here in the case of I2 there is no external torque applied. So therefore the external torque is given as 0. So 0 is equal to, so now here the restoring torques that are developed here is because of 1 this particular I2, the restoring torque developed in this particular I2. Then there is a restoring torque that is developed in this particular spring and then there is the restoring torque that is developed in this particular damper. So therefore this becomes 0 is equal to to I2 plus to K which is the restoring torque developed in the spring plus to B which is the restoring torque that is developed in this particular damper. So therefore here to I2 is given as I2 into the second order derivative of this particular angular displacement. So this becomes I2 into d squared theta by dd squared plus here the restoring torque that is developed in the case of this particular spring is given as k into the difference between these two angular displacements that is theta minus theta 1. And finally we have plus this particular torque that is developed in this particular dash pot B. So therefore since there is only displacement here this would become B into d by dt of theta. So now let us take the Laplace transform of all these. So now taking the Laplace transform of equation number 1 we would get tau of s is equal to i1 s squared into theta 1 of s plus k into theta 1 of s minus k into theta of s. So let this be equation number 3 and now applying Laplace transform of this particular equation we would get 0 is equal to I2 into S squared into theta of S plus K into theta of S minus K into theta 1 of S plus B into S into 
theta of s. So here, what we have to do is that, now let us now group the theta of s terms and theta 1 of s terms. So here what we get is that theta 1 of s into k is equal to theta of s into i2 into s squared plus k plus b s. So now from this, we get theta of s is equal to theta 1 of s into k divided by i2 s squared plus b s plus k. So now let us substitute this value of theta as over here. On substituting it there, we would get tau of s is equal to i1 s squared into theta 1 of s plus k into theta 1 of s minus k into here the value of theta is given as theta 1 of s into k divided by i2 s squared plus b s plus k. Substituting this over here, we would get k into theta 1 of s into k divided by i2 s square plus b s plus k. So now here the transfer function is given as the output divided by the input. So here the output is theta 1 of s. So here on taking theta 1 of s we would get the transfer function theta 1 of s divided by tau of s is equal to here on expanding this we would get i2 s square plus b s plus k the whole divided by here we have i1 s square plus k whole multiplied by i2 s square plus b s plus k the whole minus k squared into theta 1 of s. So therefore this thus is the required transfer function of this particular rotational control system. As simple as that guys. This thus is simply how we can find the transfer function of a rotational mechanical control system. As simple as that. So here the few things that you have to keep in your mind is that here when we took the restoring torque on this particular dashboard, we did not take the subtraction between this theta and this theta 1. That is because one edge of this particular damper is connected to a particular wall. So here only if there are two displacements present on both the sides, we would take the difference in their particular displacements. But here if we are taking the case of this particular spring, there is an angular displacement this side and there is an angular displacement this side as well. That is why we take the subtraction in the case of this particular spring on both the cases. Here we are taking k into theta 1 minus theta and here also we have taken k into theta of s minus k into theta 1 of s. Here k theta minus theta 1. So that is why we are taking the subtraction. But here in the case of this particular damper we don't have to take that because there is only one displacement and that is present over here. And hence we have taken b into d theta by dt. So if you guys have understood this then you guys can do any problems on how you can find the transfer function of a rotational mechanical control system. It is as simple as that guys. So I hope you guys now have a clear understanding of how you can find the transfer function of a rotational mechanical control system. And if you guys found this video informative, please do hit the like button and join this community by hitting that subscribe button. We'll be discussing about the further topics in the upcoming videos. So stay tuned, stay subscribed. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.